Hi there, if you want to spice up your life and maybe cure that sniffle that you've got, you're in the right place for right now. We're joined by Lindsay Mayer from Tillery Street Plant Company. Great to have you back on the program. Welcome. Thanks, Tom. I'm really excited to be here. Well, you've brought along a lot of great herbs for people here in Central Texas. Mm -hmm. And we're going to march through those because there's a lot of good information to share. We'll start with ginger, which has lots of different uses. And yes. it's a beautiful, I think it's a beautiful plant as well. Yeah. What now? What's the f number one thing people use ginger for? I would say a lot of people use ginger for probably cooking, mm -hmm. just to flavor their dishes. But sure. there are so many other medicinal uses yeah. that people can use it for that they don't know about. It's supposed to be very calming for your stomach and yeah. You know. That's what I was going to say. Absolutely. So there, if you are somebody that suffers from a lot of kind of nausea and maybe indigestion, which mm -hmm. can kind of happen a lot around the holidays when sure. you're eating and drinking all these <laughs> right. crazy things. Right. Um, ginger tea can be a really awesome thing for you to drink, to just kind of settle your stomach and make mm -hmm. everything run really smoothly. So how do you, how do you harvest the, the, the plant for tea? Is it the roots themselves? Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, and it's really easy to grow. So you're gonna end up harvesting your root at mm -hmm. the end of the growing season. Okay. So that would be before our first freeze, which right. who knows when that'll be these days. <laughs> right. um, so you're gonna wanna plant it in early spring mm -hmm. after the first frost. And you basically just put a couple nicks in sort of the top lobe of the rhizome. I've never heard that. Yeah, and it just you just stick it in your soil and bury it a little bit, and then it just grows and you dig it up before the freeze. Okay, and the nicks cause it to divide and, and grow? Yeah, Except, so, it, it, so it's gonna produce a lot of shoots that's out of right. that, the green yeah. shoots, mm -hmm. which um, the ginger plant that's really robust that I brought has a lot of. Yeah, you can right. See. So, and this is a plant that is cold sensitive, yes. typically. You know, so a lot of them will survive from one winter to the next in the ground here in Austin. Mm -hmm. But sometimes. <laughs> yeah, depending. And like this year, it's supposed to be one of the coldest winters that we've had in a while. Okay. So sometimes you can either dig it up and leave some in the ground, mm -hmm. or you can dig it up and save some of the root and plant it again in the spring. Right. You can transplant it into a pot, or you can mm -hmm. just grow it in a pot and bring it inside if you want. Yeah, that's a, a good strategy for, for a lot of those tender things, just grow them in the container. Yeah. Now, right next to the ginger, we have turmeric, mm -hmm. um, which I've never grown. And tell me a little bit about this plant. So turmeric is a really amazing medicinal plant as well. So it's basically going to kind of follow all the same growing characteristics as ginger. Mm -hmm. It's a rhizome that you're after. You're going to want to harvest it before your first freeze. You can preserve your turmeric root and plant it again in the spring. But I really love turmeric because it has a lot of properties. It's sort of anti-inflammatory, which mm -hmm. is really nice for the cold season. If you're somebody that suffers from kind of cold joints right. around this time of year, it can be really helpful for arthritic conditions. Mm -hmm. Same with the ginger. Yeah. It's really warming and aromatic, the ginger is, and yeah. that helps with that as well. It's supposed to be good for circulation, I think, just yes. generally. Right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. You can use it for kind of, well, the ginger specifically, not mm -hmm. to go back to the ginger again, mm -hmm. but there's one thing. It's really amazing if you want to use the ginger to take a hot bath in oh. for circulation. Uh -huh. So if you're really suffering some kind of from a kind of cold mm -hmm. condition in the wintertime, mm -hmm. boil some ginger in a pot, pour it in your bath, Sounds, and then, it sounds like it'd be aromatic if yeah, nothing else, right? right? <laughs> and then it also helps you sweat out any kind of virus that you may oh. be carrying if you feel like you're starting to come down with something. Well, these things have been used for thousands of yeah. years in Ayurvedic medicine and other ways. So, mm -hmm. yeah, why not give it a shot, you know? Mm -hmm. At the very least, you just come out smelling like a ginger, which is... Right? <laughs> a lot Isn't of people pay high money for... I don't know if I necessarily recommend combining turmeric with <laughs> your bath because it also can dye your skin. Oh, okay, but, maybe not. Yeah, but just the ginger is awesome. Okay, very good. Well, rosemary, of course, everybody knows and grows. This has become, in the past 30 years, I've seen it just kind of become one of the, the star plants of the Austin area. Mm -hmm. And and who doesn't want to have it in the garden? Because just walking through and just rubbing it on your hands is one of the great pleasures of a garden. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's even great if you want to take it and dry it and make a little rosemary bundle out of it mm -hmm. and just go through and you can kind of burn it in your house. I know right. a lot of people love doing that. Yeah. Instead of using um, a sage, which isn't right. native to our area. Sure. 
Sure. So it, it has, and obviously culinary uses. Yes. Like crazy, really. Yes, yes, yes. I made a really wonderful dried rosemary preparation mm -hmm. in oil here right. that I wanted to display. Yeah. It's just beautiful to look at it, if nothing else, right? Yeah. But then you, cooking with this is a base oil. Mm -hmm. is terrific. And it helps you get all of the medicinal properties in a really interesting way because you're incorporating it into your food. Mm -hmm. But I do want to say as a disclaimer, you should really dry the rosemary before you put it in the oil. Okay. Otherwise, it can cause the oil to sort of sour with all the water leaching okay. out of the uh, plant material. Makes sense. Makes sense. So mm -hmm. bundle it up and hang it for a while and yeah. just let it scent to room for a little bit before you um, use it as mm -hmm. an infusion. Yeah, and this is another one that is... Um, really great if you're kind of suffering from a sort of respiratory infection mm -hmm. you can have some rosemary tea because it's really warming and it's also antimicrobial so it can help with any kind of upper respiratory sure. issues that you might have it's just all-purpose great plant yes well another one is echinacea yeah. which is one of my favorite ornamental plants mm -hmm. you know lovely flower mm -hmm. love the color and, and this is one that has been used here in North America for millennia. Yes, absolutely. Mm. I think even the Native Americans used to use it topically um, if they got some sort of wound or if mm -hmm. they suffered from a snake bite, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. I've never used it for that reason. Sure. So I'm just saying I'm glad this you haven't is... haven't been bit yeah. by a snake. <laughs> right, right. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of people coming into the nursery and they <laughs> ask me about echinacea and they want to know other ways they can use it. And it's a really, really wonderful plant for immune boosting, mm -hmm. which is something we could really use this time of year. It's starting sure. to get cold. So the trick with echinacea, <laughs> yeah, right? So the trick with echinacea is that you have to let it grow for two years before you can harvest the root. Okay. So that's really what you're after for the medicine, not like the rosemary where you're using the aerial parts, the mm -hmm. above ground parts. Okay, well, very good point. Beautiful plant, right next to it, another beautiful plant. And it's the passive flora or passion vine. Mm -hmm. And tell me, about, I don't really know much about the medicinal use of the passion vine. Yeah, so um, passion vine, it's another great plant for our area. It's a really vigorous grower. It's mm -hmm. going to kind of go dormant in the winter time, but it's really hardy to the roots. has a gorgeous flower. You can use any of the above ground parts. So it's mm -hmm. going to be the leaf, the flowers, mm -hmm. um, the stem. It's really nice as a tea, so it's actually going to be kind of um, really gentle, calming. It's going to help kind of settle your nerves. It can really help with any sort of restless sleep syndrome that you mm -hmm. might be suffering from, especially if it's due to nerves. Right, and I've heard I've heard that it has a sedative quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and and a vigorous, vigorous plant that's easy to grow. Yes. You just got to learn to share it, right? Right, absolutely. <laughs> See, that's the wonderful thing about this is that it grows so well, you can share it with all of your friends. Well, share it with your friends. And, and preserve it. And share it with the butterflies. Yes, as well. <laughs> yes, absolutely. The gulf fritillary. Yeah, they're, just, they're crazy about it. And mm -hmm. So you got to accept that Zen like calm, yes. right? It's like, you will be eaten. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. By me and others. Right, if not by me, <laughs> by the caterpillars. Exactly. Well, these are all terrific. Um, the, the next plant is, is basil, and everybody loves this. Mm -hmm. Culinary purposes, but it also has a, a, a medicinal quality when you use it as a, a tea, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the plant that I brought is holy basil. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a really kind of tender annual for our area. Mm -hmm. Um, you're going to want to grow it mainly just during the warm season, or you can have it in a pot and bring it inside, of course. Mm -hmm. And you're really after all of the above ground parts. You could do the flowers, the leaves, the stems. It's really nice if you make a uh, vegetable glycerin tincture out of it, right. or you could do a tea. So this plant is also a really holy plant. It's been used for thousands of years. Mm -hmm in herbal medicine, and it's a great adaptogen. Yeah. So what that's gonna do is help you adapt to stress. All right, well, something we all need these days. Right? <laughs> and it's immune boosting. Right, you mentioned tinctures, and I just wanna talk about that. Mm -hmm. We just have a little bit of time left, but this is something that people can do at home. Yes. And, and what's, how do you do it, and what's the benefit? So without getting into too much detail, sure, yeah. the way that I like to do it is by using a vegetable, organic vegetable glycerin. Mm -hmm. So it's just vegetable based, so it's safe for children, right. safe for people that can't have alcohol. And you're basically preserving your fr 
fresh or dried plant material in that. Okay. And then Easy. you can, yeah, you just press it off and then you can, it's, it's great for a year or several years. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we really do appreciate you coming on, sharing all this great information, yeah. b giving us all the boost for the cool weather ahead, right? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, it's a pleasure seeing you, Lindsay. Thanks again for coming back to the program. And coming up next is Daphne. Mm -hmm.